This is Jones, and welcome to CRT Gaming Podcast, episode number 14, Daytona. Did you uh, climb into the uh, Hornet 41, take a couple laps on the track? All I could say is, gentlemen, start your engines. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and also, as uh, Daz picks in the house, this happened to be uh, Daz, Daz's uh, choice for racing games that we did. And Mr. Daz, why are we running around this track? screaming at these blue blue skies because we need that rolling start baby gotta have it <laughs> no man this is a, a you know played this on the saturn back in the day and i will say the uh, disclaimer here we tried to play this on saturn emulator and it was total shit in comparison to how the game should run <laughs> so oh. we ended up playing this on uh uh, Xbox One from the Xbox 360 emulator on the Xbox One. But, holy shit, that version of it's beautiful. <laughs> well, I was thinking, like, in all fairness, like, uh, we're, we're playing Daytona. And, uh, so, you know, if you want to rewind time and get back to the original Daytona game, um, it's the arcade. I, well, I mean, I played the crap out of the Saturn version, but as crappy as it was then, even though you played it, I mean, you, you, it had flaws. It had some horrendous pop-up. Um, it, it, it clearly could not compete visually with Ridge Racer on the PlayStation, but it still was Daytona, so you played it. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> and uh, it just it just never, you know, it, it could never compare to the arcade version of Daytona. And uh, I feel like the Xbox version is actually better than the arcade because there is like the arcade does have pop up in it. It's very minimal, but it, but it does. And, yeah, the uh, Xbox one did not. Yeah, so it's just Daytona in full glory. Uh, just going away as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it seemed like from, you know, the videos that you're sending out, Jones, this really was kind of the definitive version of this game and all of its, you know, because it's been released on a lot of different platforms, and this seemed like it was kind of taking the best parts of all of those different releases, and of course, you know, to the best of uh, the Xbox's ability, just throwing every polygon on the screen that it could, you know, it was uncompromised you know, in comparison to the others. Oh, definitely. So it was like, it was great because I I didn't even know this existed. Like I said, I, I like the Daytona arcade game uh, like a lot. There was nothing cooler than seeing like four or eight of those lined up in an arcade where you can yeah. race each other. That was, was great. I, I can't think of too many other games that ever did something like that. And uh, like I said just nothing ever really did it justice. And uh, you know, like earlier this week, I you know found out that there was a version on the Xbox that came out in 2011 that then got an update for the Xbox One in 2017 and it was just like Christmas came early it was like I've never <laughs> I've never been able to play Daytona like this before so it was awesome yeah it took me back to when uh, the wife and I would go to the arcade and play that uh, at like Jillian's or uh, Dave and Buster's because they would have them there and we'd you know have a few drinks or a lot of drinks and 
take a few laps around the track. <laughs> but yeah, man, playing it on the Xbox, man, it was absolutely phenomenal. Like, just how crisp and clean and sharp everything looked and everything. Yeah, it was great. That was very... And what's funny is, you told me about that, and I had the stupid thing on my 360, just the demo of it. So all I had to oh. do was click purchase. <laughs> and then I had it. That's so wrong. Uh, <laughs> and what's kind of wild to think about just going back in time, like this game was made, I think, in like 93 or 94 and 26 years later, we are we are playing it, you know, again. And uh, yeah, geez, the network full cabinet back in the 90s, it felt like it was almost like an amusement park ride with all yes. the monitors and the bombast. Like it was just, it looked like a roller coaster. And it was that. They, they, they had to, they had, Sega had to because they needed to make something. They learned, I think, a lesson with the Genesis, but they knew that they had to put something in the arcade that you just never could have at home. And Daytona was kind of moving through with that. Oh, it, it, I think it was one of the very first games to have like like texture maps, like in, in the arcade. And I, I remember that like, well, this game, like I said, came out like ninety three, ninety four. And I remember looking at this game, and at this point in time, uh, Virtua Fighter just came out. Yeah, and Virtua Racing. Virtua Racing had been out, and when this, but when Daytona came out, and then Virtua Fighter Two came out, I remember actually standing in an arcade, looking at these games, thinking, I will never be able to play this at home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like that thought was submit. Like, I was certain of this. Like, final answer. We've come a long way. Yeah, man, for sure. I mean, I mean, you remember Virtual Racing came out, and it was, I mean, yeah, it wasn't texture map, but it looked awesome, right? And then they, they reproduced a fairly good version for the Genesis. I was like, holy shit, man, <laughs> good job. Uh, I mean, obviously it wasn't the same, but it was still pretty awesome. But then, you know, Daytona, yeah, they couldn't reproduce that one <laughs> for another. I don't know how many years, you know, almost 20 years later they couldn't do it, or, you know, uh, 15 years later or so. Yeah, because you can look at the Dreamcast version of it, and while it looks a lot nicer, like it, <laughs> uh, exponentially nicer than the Saturn version, it, it still is not the arcade. Yeah. But, truth be told, the best thing about Daytona, while its graphic prowess at the time in the arcade was awesome, what really set this game apart was none of that shit. It was the freaking soundtrack. I mean, it's it's a classic, you know. The uh, when this came out, you know, kind of talking about when it was released, it was. You could hear the music just radiating. Uh, I think when I first saw Daytona, it was when I was in college or about to go to school. And, you know, when you're looking for colleges, you kind of go to the universities, kind of check them out. And one of the universities that I went to was by a uh, theme park. And you guys remember what it was like back then. Like, if you're at a theme park, that's where the expensive video games were. Mm -hmm. Like, they, these weren't the run of the mill video games. That's where they. They went to those kind of uh, uh, amusement parks first, and holy shit, like it was mind blowing. Uh, because my first kind of taste of Daytona, I didn't get to play it on the Saturn uh, very much, uh, but my first taste of it was at a uh, amusement park with all the uh, big cabinets networked together. And uh, man, it's uh, it uh, you only walked away with a huge memory. <laughs> <laughs> It was one of the only games I remember singing along with the damn music while I was playing the game. <laughs> I mean, oh, you know? yeah. And the music, the music was a, such a big part of it. It really, really was, you know, because at that point, music was, you know, definitely evolving. But that was the first time I remember hearing like the kind of CD quality stuff. I mean, sure, you heard that kind of stuff with um, like Dragon's Lair because it was running off an optical drive here, not an optical drive, but it was yeah, laser, know, disc. laser disc. And um, 
you know, the but to hear it though in a real time game that looked as cool as Daytona with that you know, full full audio experience, it was uh, it was pretty amazing. And years later, people still talk about the game and they still talk about the music. The music is a huge part. Of, like I think with all racing games. Yeah. Oh, it definitely. Um, it, it's all about. Well, to me, the music in this game um, goes back to a time period where I guess you could say things were more simple. But it, the truth is, like, uh, like today you have like the Forzas, uh, Gran Turismo's, uh, etc., where everyone's got like a licensed vehicle, and everyone's trying to simulate kind of it, like racing, but a realistic driving. You know, not just hold down the gas and let's go. Um, so this was like an arcade racer. And with the music added into it, like it, it just, it, it's back when games were just meant to be fun. You know, they weren't mm -hmm. trying to be a representation of what exists in real life. Uh, this was just pure, unadulterated fun. Yeah. It was an art. You're on point. Absolutely. I mean, you remember the music in Ridge Racer was phenomenal. Rage Racer. Uh, and, but this was like all that stuff was really, really cool and awesome to listen to on its own. But this shit was just on another level of fun, uh, entertaining, awesome, all of it at the same. You couldn't listen to it and not be in a good mood. You know, I yeah, mean, it just got it was jazzed. very, very positive. It was very positive. Uh, Takanobu Mitsuoshi wrote the music for uh, for Daytona and he worked on a whole bunch of Sega classics. I, apparently kind of going back to even Space Harrier, but we're talking virtual racing and virtual fighter two and three and of course automatic. Uh, big titles like Shenmue and uh, one of my favorite Don't games, uh, Burning head. Rangers. Um, <laughs> He really did kind of touch. Him. He he is a part of that Sega sound of that time, uh, back then, and uh, it, it's it doesn't get any more you know, you know, on point than uh, than the Daytona soundtrack. No, that, that man has an amazing resume. Um, like some of the things I I wasn't even aware of that you know he predominantly did uh you know music uh, for Sega, but he also did some voice acting. So, like, in Virtual Fighter, he is Akira and Kagi, ninja. So, like... You know, he's he's the growly ninja guy? Yeah, and actually, he's the, he was only Akira in the first Virtual Fighter, but he's, he was Kagi 1 through 5. So, he is the ninja. Dude, that's uh, my main character in Virtual that's Fighter. That's my boy! That's Kage. <laughs> that's my boy! Sing <laughs> for me, dude. Uh, but yeah, like anything that has virtue in the name of it, pretty much, you know, minus a couple here and there, but across all the games, like the fighter, striker, cop, virtual cop, all that noise, he's he's there. He had something to do with it. It's pretty, pretty, you know, as amazing as it comes, pretty much, I would think. Well, you found that documentary they just did on him. And I mean, it, he was talking about this is the first time he put his voice to a game. And that is like, yeah, and people just kind of seem to dig it. And it's like, yes, man, it's awesome. That's why they dig it. <laughs> it's so good. And I mean, and as I was, I was looking through the comments on that documentary, I mean, everybody, a lot of the comments were just like, man, this just brings and exudes so much joyful happiness from his music and his demeanor, you know, as he's talking about it, as he's doing it. And and in his voice and the music it's like dude man that, that that's awesome and yeah i mean i can't help but not be happy in a good mood and excited about everything i'm listening to and playing at that moment so the gameplay though i mean the music is a huge part of why the game is awesome but the gameplay itself was i don't know the the game kind of had a focus on drifting and power sliding and that, to me, made it feel kind of different than Ridge Racer. That I think Daytona, it felt like more like a controlled kind of drift, you know, with a lot of braking, with a lot of braking in it. Where Ridge Racer, to me, and by the way, I love Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer is like one of my favorite games. Um, Ridge Racer always felt like you were kind of like skating or slaloming through the curves. Like with Daytona, you 
actually felt like you were gripping the track. You felt like you were burning rubber, which was great, you know, because it was more stock car racing than the kind of, I don't know what you would call rig race there, like sport or autocross or something like that. Red race. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it definitely you get the feeling of, uh, you, you know, like when, when you're making a, a sharp turn, you can definitely see when you're getting ready to break loose. Uh, on the turns when I was about to break loose, I ended up using the cars next to me as a buffer zone <laughs> to, <laughs> to keep me in line so that I wouldn't get out of control too much. I'd bounce off of them and just keep kind of going. Yeah, see this uh, game, like like the control mechanic, like you're mentioning, like in Ridge Racer, like uh, for example, if you're going around, say like almost a you know, like a 90 degree turn in Ridge Racer, you, you would kind of you know like let off the gas and then mash the gas and it you know initiate a drift yeah. and you can just kind yeah, of loop, loopy loop right around it which i love that yeah um, I did too. this one you have to uh remember it is a, a an arcade game uh made by japan about an american sport <laughs> so <laughs> um so so like on the oval for example when you hit turn four which is mount sonic um which is the hardest turn yeah it is like like <laughs> You can just throw it into first gear. It doesn't explode your engine, but it initiates the drift. And then as you're drifting, you switch it right back into fourth in manual. And like that, that's how you would drift around that corner. It's a totally different mechanic, but it's it's fun. I, I liked it. I, uh, it was not as good as I used Dad, to be at it. Dad said something which is totally true, and I think that's part of what makes it feel like you know, NASCAR, Day real Daytona racing, which is like, you can kind of use the other vehicles to trade paint, which is a very NASCAR, you know, you, you don't trade paint in F1, and, you know, racing circuits like that, you know, but in NASCAR, that's kind of a part of the show, and that, I don't know, uh, you, you said something when we were playing F-Zero, uh, Jones, where it's like, each kind of track is its own like little puzzle and once you kind of figure out how to do that kind of uh, drift and downshift you know tricks like that it, it, it it's pretty addictive you get you get hooked quick yeah like my problem with the game is is getting out to first because there's so many cars um so if like i'm at the point where i have the tracks down but i do not have the X factor down, which is all these cars that are in my way. So they, they usually screw me, and then I run out well, of time. I'll, I'll tell you this: I, I got first place on the first track today, and the you know the, I'm the golf using, clapping you, Daz. That's so, uh, hey, that's impressive. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, this is the thing: you know the the trading paint with people is great until you're out front and there ain't nobody to trade paint with. <laughs> And it gets a little harder to make those turns. And, you know, because if one screw up, you know, one bad break or one oh, yeah. hit the wall a little hard and 50 cars pass you. Yeah, it's a game of I, milliseconds. It really is. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's over. It's over. It's like if you go to a pit stop, I don't know why you would bother because it, you're in last place immediately. Um, but I, I did. I did some defensive driving, I will say that, when I got first, but I got first, and I'm pretty sure I have video of it. <laughs> I will dig that shit up, but it was uh, it was epic. And I, I pretty much stopped playing after that, and I was like, okay, uh, I've peaked, I'm done here. <laughs> but it was cool shit, it was nice to, uh, to be able to do that. It's a victory lane. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> now, that it was is. only on the first track. Yeah, I can't do it every time, like, it takes me five or six tries to do it like i don't know it's, it's, it's all i got cars. it on the second try like i said it's, I mean, it's, it's just the cars it's a, it's a game of seconds yeah it, it's Not a too. game of seconds and yeah. once again like like f zero this is a sega difficult game <laughs> sega, it's a sega racing game so you, you need to you need to bring bring your a game to it and uh watch and learn and improvise <laughs> that's blue, blue skies man <laughs> i'll do it again yeah, that's again. isn't that's the third track and holy shit that yeah track is like that you you better get you need, to you, daytona quick <laughs> you need that happy music to keep you going on that track because that track yeah. sucks <laughs> it's that like track sucks fierce <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're not friends
or not. No, I mean, there's two things, you know, you got two emotions there. You got the music that's making you happy, but then the track that's just pissing you off repeatedly. Oh, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. This is bullshit. <laughs> and then there's like 10 other ones just like it. It's like, oh, man, screw this. No, it's, it's brutal. It's just, yeah, there's one <laughs> section with the bridge, like you're driving under it, and it's just, it just goes wrong every time. Like, yes. It was, yeah. it was funny. I was, as I was playing it, you know, you, playing around with the difficulties and everything and then it increases like the the lap or you can play with the lap count and i noticed that so the first track the easiest track has eight laps then the next track had like four and then the last yeah. track has two laps you gotta do yeah. <laughs> i was like man Too long keep, yeah keep your head Too on a swivel long laps <laughs> well i mean that's kind of the, the thing you know what i was a i still have my old saturn and uh i plugged it in and I got to you know, fuck around with that on the original hardware for a second but the, the drive is actually starting to die on it and I could totally tell that uh, the system's on uh, borrowed time but I, I was kind of curious I didn't get to do it just because I was worried about the system but did you guys back in the day like there's there's two different um, modes. It was like arcade version and Saturn version. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember what the difference between those two were? That... I think the the arcade one, you have to hit checkpoints basically to continue to play. Like it's oh, an arcade okay. game. Okay. So you have to you have to There's, you're certain... constantly qualifying basically. Yes. And gotcha. if you don't hit gotcha. it then you run out of time and the race is over. But if I think on Saturn it's more of a finish the race rather than checking time i think that's the big difference i i did I, I did get play i did get to play long enough to see the dope ass uh, photo of the development team when you finish the race like where they're just <laughs> all like hanging out it's like it looks like some like you know basketball team like you know photo of the of uh, the developers wearing their yeah. matching jackets or whatever i was like that's awesome like <laughs> video games should do that they don't do that anymore you <laughs> know all right, so get with it. So, what rating would you give this game, guys? We'll see. I I will get like um. Okay, I, I'll rank it as, as for what I played. Um, I played the uh, the Xbox 360 version on the Xbox One of Daytona, and as far as a conversion of Daytona, I would give it a ten, like hands Go down, down, a ten yes. for a conversion. Um, it's it's like, like the Daytona. definitive, definitive version of Daytona. Yeah, agreed. I mean, yeah, it's perfect. Like it, yeah, if you like the game at all, by all means, if you can get it that way, definitely do. Yeah. Um, and as far as a racing game, um, I'd give it like a like an eight, eight and a half maybe. Yep. Um, it's a fun game. It's it's just uh, you know, like it's limiting. Uh, you know, because either the level. Is something playable or, or something really, 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 really hard and demanding that gets frustrating? Um, so that like your soul. It's like you're <laughs> limited on how much you can actually sit down and play in one moment in time. Um, but yeah, it, it's fun. It, it's a it's a intoxicatingly fun game. So I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I mean, gosh, uh, after after playing it, like I said, my experience with. Um, Daytona was mainly in the arcade. Um, Daytona is kind of like a part of like the holy trilogy of like Sega 3D racing games. I have way more experience with virtual racing on the 32X, and um, oh man, I was good. And uh, the actually, um, I my my roommate uh, bought the Saturn after the launch, so the racing game that we got and I really enjoyed was Sega Rally. So this was kind of a fun treat, you know. Uh, this go round because like my most of my experience was uh, with the arcade game and the and the amazingly you know epic soundtrack. But to review it now, like thinking about you know what was kind of going on back then, like Sega had this like top down directive from their leadership to like crush their rival, you know Namco. And I like I said, huge 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 Ridge Racer fan. Um, and back then, you know, these companies were kind of blow for blow, trying to beat each other out in genre titles. It's like, Sega was doing one thing, Namco was going to kind of counter it. It almost felt like 
Pixar and DreamWorks movies. They were always like releasing the same shit at the same time, and the thing that Daytona was going up against was Ridge Racer, and um, Daytona's f- f- excellent game. Uh, as a game, I agree with Jones. I like this is like an eight, eight and a half. Um, if I was to review the soundtrack, I would give it a twelve, uh, if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yes, agreed on all counts, man. I mean, I, I'm with both of you. I mean, the, it, as far as like the, the Xbox 360 version is, I mean, perfect. It's perfect Daytona. And as far as Daytona as a game, yeah, man, an eight, solid eight. Uh, it's hella fun. Uh, great soundtrack, lots of fun, good time. Put it away, play something else. But yeah, it was it was definitely fun to revisit this old nugget. Uh, and I will say, I, I know it seems like we're turning into a freaking Sega channel. <laughs> uh, we're not Sega. It's if you want to sponsor that us, Sega <laughs> made a lot of really good shit, and especially in this time, and they made lots of lots of stuff that we all really enjoyed and you know what Gohan was saying about Namco and them going for blow for blow I mean, the fact is they were both making kick ass games and they were all awesome Ridge they Racer is freaking great were, yeah, you know Daytona is, yeah completely they were great games and that, I, you don't see that so much anymore you see mostly now everybody's chasing a big price tag and a, another series you know the same another episode in the same series and yeah that's fine i mean i like those some of those games too but i, I miss this i miss uh, a new kick-ass game from a you know company that i really like that just keeps making new shit that's awesome sega rally championship was badass i wasn't any good at it but it was awesome <laughs> uh and I, you know it, it was great uh, daytona hella fun didn't have to be good at it you could just have a good time playing it um, but anyways, yeah, we're not a Sega channel. It's just it's good shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, they, they do make some good games. I mean, how many consoles that you consider retro, you know, are Sega? It's basically all their consoles, you know, it's pretty crazy. Um, so let's see. So we did Daytona this week from Daspic, and uh, next week uh, we're going to finish up our three part racing challenge we're doing uh, with Mr. Gohan's pick. So, uh, Mr. Gohan, what have you selected for us? Well, when you pick racing, you know, a few weeks ago, Jones, it's, there's a lot of things out there that could be racing, but in my mind, uh, racing kind of breaks down to a couple big kind of categories. I felt like you picked an awesome one with F-Zero, as a sci-fi racing game, uh, Daz Daytona is like awesome arcade, you know, real carish arcade, you know, uh, arcade action, real car uh, racing. Uh, but the one genre that we haven't talked about are, are the kart racing games. So I, I'll ask you guys to go in with an open mind. Um, the uh, the kart racing game that I thought we would try to play is uh, Diddy Kong Country. Uh, for the Nin 64. Made by Rare. Uh, this is, uh, you know, they were kind of a staple, you know, uh, Nintendo developer back then. And uh, Diddy Kong is uh, definitely, uh, I think, one of their better games uh, on, the, on the system. So, well, uh, we'll give that one a try. <laughs> I didn't see this coming. Fair enough. I did not. I was expecting Ridge Racer. I was expecting Ridge Racer too. <laughs> Where did he come? Okay. I like some. Uh, and what system was this on? This is what on system? the N64. So. Okay. Oh, okay. Now it makes sense. <laughs> see, now the the N64 controllers that I sent yeah. you make sense. Yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Should have known. See, it's like the it's the smoking gun, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Diddy Kong, it is. All right. Well, awesome. So uh, I guess stay tuned next week and uh, see how we do some uh, Diddy Kong racing. Uh, until then, this is uh, Jones with Daz Pick and Gohan, and we are signing out. Until next time. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>